Shalom. Today we're going to look at a verse from Roman which ties together a lot of words that have the same root and it gives us an interesting insight in, into the deeper meaning of these words and the verse. The verse starts in Romans 1, 20 and 21. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, that is, the men are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So we see that the attributes of Jehovah are clearly seen in nature. When we talk about the word nature in English, it not only means the great outdoors, but it also means certain characteristics of people or things. Now this root, teva, tet, bet, ayin, is going to figure into this study in several ways. The word for nature, the great outdoors, in Hebrew is a modern Hebrew word, which is simply teva. We're going to look at the word for ring, which is a biblical word, and it's tabaat. And then we're also going to look at the word for coin, which is a post-biblical word, a word that would appear in the Talmud or in the writings after biblical time. And that word has the same root, matbea. We're going to see how all these things are tied together and how they tie to our verse. Biblically, the root teba means to sink down, Exodus 15.4. Pharaoh's chariots and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captives are drowned in the Red Sea. 1 Samuel 17.49 And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it, maybe slung it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Interesting, according to the laws of inertia, if the stone was coming at his forehead from the front, then the inertia would cause him to fall backwards. But that's not what happened. He fell face down. So this is the root biblical meaning, to sink down. The word tabaat, which means ring, comes from this concept we're going to see. Genesis 41:42, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Esther 3.10 And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. What has the ring got to do with sinking down? We see that this particular ring that is being given in both these scriptures is a symbol of authority. And so here is a picture of a ring. It has a carved design on it and it is used for in this case sealing a letter the wax is melted the ring sinks down into the wax and the impression characteristic of the ring is left on the seal and that makes it an official document so that is why the ring and the sealing and the sinking go together here we see that the officials are trying to test Yeshua, Luke 20, 22, and verses 24 and 25. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? Show me a penny, whose image and superscription hath it. They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. And so you can see the same process of this sinking concept comes also for coins. This is the word we talked about, matbea. These are coins from the first Jewish revolt uh, before the Romans captured Judea in 70 AD. So you see that the character is stamped onto the coin. The nature of the coin is it's in the die on one side and the obverse is on the other side. And the die must sink down into the coin, and that leaves the character of what the coin, the designs, the letters and shapes on the coin.
So we see that the nature of Yehovah, of God, is revealed in the things that he made. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created them. Male and female created he them. Now Rashi is an 11th century Jewish commentator on the Old Testament. And this is what he wrote about Genesis 127 in the, in the type that was specially made for him. That is man. God made man in the image that was special for man. For everything else was created by a creative fiat. In other words, God spoke everything else into, con into existence, whilst he, that is the man, was brought into existence by a creative act, literally by hand. As it is said in Psalm 139, verse 5, And thou hast laid thy hand upon me. He, that is the man, was made by a seal as a coin, that is made by a die, that is, that is called in Old French, coin. Of course, Rashi, Rashi himself was French, and so it would be natural for him to refer to the French language. He cites a verse which he says is similar to Job 38.14. And this is a common idea among, even in the Talmudic, the much earlier commentaries, that the man is changed as clay under the seal, as it is written in Job 38.14. So the concept of the man being made as a coin is common. The full verse from Job reads, It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And so... The rabbis agree that even though the die for the stamp of the man comes from Adam, that it would appear, just as every coin, that every man would be the same, but they say no, they're all similar because it's done by God, and as a garment, each garment is slightly different. So each person is also slightly different, but has the same basic nature. So we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 46 through 49, How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The natural man comes first, the spiritual man comes afterwards. The first man is of the earth, earthy, that is Adam. His name relates to what he is made out of, Adama, earth. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we are stamped in that earthly image, in Adam's image, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. As it's written in Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. This will be the heavenly image, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, and we are made into his image. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 1 John 3.2 Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So we are made into the image of the heavenly man by the Holy Spirit. This is going to require an intimate connection to the Holy Spirit. We are going to have to be willing to be touched by the Spirit in order for this transformation to happen. 1 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Now he which establisheth us with you in Messiah and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us. It's the same process of the sealing wax. He's going to take the dye, the ring, which has the form of it, and sink it into the wax so that we are sealed, 
And the symbol of our seal is that he has given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 1.13 In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. It requires an intimate connection. Romans 1, 20 and 21. This is where we started. Let's go back and look at it. For the invisible things of him, the character, the nature, the traits of Jehovah, from the creation of the world, when we look at the world, are clearly seen. We can see those images. We can see those traits being understood by the things that are made. All the nature that shows all the character, including the human being, and that includes his eternal power and Godhead, so that they, men who look upon these things, are without excuse. No one can look at the world and say, there is no God, because the traits and character of God are revealed in nature. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Moving from there, uh, verse 22, 23 and 24. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image of something else, an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. If the man will not be imprinted and sealed with the nature and character of God, if he refuses to go, from the coin that he was originally stamped from, the coin of earth, the coin of Adam, then God is going to give them up. And what does that look like? Psalm 9, 15. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Psalm 69, 14. Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. If the man does not allow God to take his die, his image of his son, and impress it onto himself, then the man himself sinks down into the pit. I hope this has been edifying to you. Until next time, Tasimita Inayim, Ahashamayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.